bringing the light of the divine to past life regression therapy. Without further ado, Greg McHugh. Okay. Um, I've been practicing this time for 12 years, 13 years, something like that, in Denver. Uh, I have a mixed background, like a lot of us, and um, probation officer, uh, gestalt, therapy student, you know, um, drugs, lots of good drugs years ago, and psychedelic kind, of course and um, meditation and training with people that were real characters at the time and outrageous who demonstrated a kind of um, like let it be, let yourself be in the event with the patient, client, and yourself and allow things to happen. These were my gestalt mentors. Although one of them was very controlling, the others were not. Um, and then I had lots of experiences where I was seeking to connect inside. Uh, lived in the woods in the Sierras for three years with a dog, a few cats. Um, and a spiritual community I was in for nine years, which uh, changed my life forever. And um, I get a little mushy here and there because it brings up feelings that I have about it all. And, um, and when I was in that community, I started doing healing work for people uh, remotely. It was just part of the job, kind of. We, we had a place where we did that, a chapel, um, and where we would go, and people, there was a so-called prayer list. But, and uh, those of us who were involved in that part of the work would sit and go into deep meditation and then do remote healing for people, seeing them well and whole. Um, then I had a life where I had a career out in the world uh, for 18 years and did public policy consulting children's programs and domestic violence uh, funding legislation, uh, child welfare legislation, child abuse laws, stuff like that. In uh, 88, I had a healing experience uh, in regression therapy around my anger, and, um, and that was transformative. And it was with a person that had studied alchemical hypnotherapy. Some of you familiar with that? that you know, David Quigley? Yeah, David Quigley. So later I trained with him and Sean Tamal or Nick Arda. He's got another third or fourth name now. And um, so I studied a whole gamut, basics of hypnosis and so on. Never thought I'd use it. I just thought I was going to be doing this consulting and lobbying stuff forever, which I was good at and I loved doing it and so on. And then uh, uh, remarried in 94 or 5 and then eventually left all that in 98 and went, oh, I'm just going to go and study some more hypnotherapy and do a little stock trading and kind of take it easy, and, you know. Well, I made money and then I lost it and meantime I was learning all these other tools and I entered into this realm where I got really excited. And I was mentioning this the other night, last night, about you know feeling this charge in my heart around some of these tools that I was learning. And uh, sorry, I won't do this again. I promise. And um, but it was a charge. It was like uh, pressure coming in through the heart, and then experiencing an understanding that was coming out through it. So. Uh, one of the tools that I'll talk about, actually there were two people whose work I studied that are really kind of instrumental in how I work now. Uh, one was um, 
a process called core transformation. Any, anybody familiar with that? Oh, you ought to look it up. It's a book by that name, Core Transformation, Connie Ray Andreas, A-N-D-R-E-A-S. And she and her sister, Tamara, uh, wrote the book, and they, I think they're both still training, or at least Tamara is, she's much younger. Uh, Connie Ray is a psychologist, lives in Boulder. Her husband, uh, Steve, was one of the, well, they were really both in the, one of the, in the foundation groups with, in NLP years ago, studying Erickson and all those people. So in this protocol, uh, Connie Ray would take a part, or as you might know, subpersonality, people understand the language I'm speaking, you know, something that's created out of trauma in a person where they end up with a field of energy and a belief associated with that. And the, the part might be anger, you know, it could be anything. Fear, I need to protect myself, um, mistrust of others, and you know, any, anything at all that as a therapist you would run into with a client or a patient. Then, the, then she did the most amazing thing. She would take this part and say to the client, and they would be uh, standing up in the demonstration, eyes wide open, and she would say, well, just call this part forward and, and let me know when you've done that. So they would do that, and then you could feel it, and then welcome it. So they would do that privately inside. And then she would say, now, what do you notice? And 90% of the time, there was a shift in the client's sense of the energy in themselves and with the part. Let's say if it was anger, they might experience some lightening of that anger, just a little, but noticeable. And then she would say, all right, now ask this part what it wants. So um, it might say something like peace, love. Uh, this is an angry part we're talking to. It would come up with these responses that had nothing to do with anger, but were genuine and each one would be a progressively higher state of consciousness that it wanted to experience, this part wanted to experience. So she would say, well, ask the part to have, to imagine having love. And so the part would imagine it and the client standing there would start to feel it ask the, uh, now just breathe that feeling in and out through your whole body, head to toe, and the person would, you'd watch and there'd be this lightning and expansiveness happening in them. Thank the part for that experience, pause, a thank you. Ask it what it wants after that, uh, union with God or something. I mean, these are not you know, little minor experiences. So people started entering into brief but solid states of enlightenment, higher states, into states of union. So the person would be standing there in the room with their eyes wide open and in a high altered state. So that's what I would call a state that was in accord with their true being, with the capital S self, God within any name is good enough, but you get the drift. So how did this happen? Well, we could go into explanations, but they're not as important as what comes next. So then she said, now ask the part, this is an abbreviated form of her protocol, ask the part to show you the first experience of itself, anger. So. The part is three years old, child, this life, inner child, angry, pissed off, let's, I'm making this up, say, uh, watching his sister being uh, beaten up by his father. 